My name is uh, Walter Kane. Walter Kane? Yes. Where do you hail from? I come from Baltimore, Maryland. Baltimore, Maryland? Yes. Some of the boys tell me you're an old Navy man, is that right? Yes, I'm a chief officer in the Navy. Chief, when did you go in the Navy? 1912. 1912? Yes. Well, now, what I'd like to know a little bit about is uh, your release, uh, the circumstances surrounding it. What I'd like to know most is a few of the circumstances surrounding your release from this Japanese prison camp. Well, it, somewhere shortly after dark, I was about ready to turn in my bamboo bunk. I sat on the ledge of the bunk and started to take off my shoes. And suddenly, uh, about a shooting stopped. What I'd like to know most is some of the circumstances surrounding your release from this Japanese prison camp. Well, shortly after dark, I decided to turn in my bamboo bunk. I went in the barracks and sat on the ledge of the bunk and started to take off my shoes. Suddenly, a lot of shooting started. Well, I thought the end had came. I was under the impression that it was a massacre, which some of the old timers, you know, we sort of expected that. Well, I hollered to some of my friends to get up and take cover. And I bolted out of the door, and I can't see very well. And however, I found a ditch, not the cleanest one in the camp either, and I dived into it. Uh, a few minutes after that, I heard the voice of Americans hollering, grab your wounded and hit for the main gate. Then I was quite sure that our American voice was in the camp. And, uh, well, I can't see very well at night. In fact, I can't see at all when it's dark. And uh, one of the uh, rangers grabbed a hold of my arm and he led me through the camp. And on the way through, I stepped on a, something that felt like a body and I said, oh, I walked on somebody. Ranger says, that's just a dead, dead Jap. Come on. <laughs> so uh, he led me on across the road and into the brush. And I fell down many times and dragged him down with me, but he hung on to me. And then he turned me over to uh, a gorilla. One he turned me over to one of the gorilla boys. He was armed only with a bolo. And, well, we got into the brush, and I was falling and stumbling over everything, and the boy was hanging on to me just like a leech. And finally, we got into a banana grove, and, well, we ran into an ambush there. Bullets were flying in every direction, and the boy finally found a hole, and we crawled into it. And then I had to take off my clothing. I had a white shirt and a short, a short trousers, you know, and... Well, I had to take them off, and I went through the brush naked, and I just tore myself to pieces, but I managed to get along all right. Uh, there at the heavy part of the firing, I tried to get the Filipino boy to go and save himself, and I was willing to go into the brush and try to hang on until morning and then work my way through some way, and... Couldn't get rid of him at all. He, He's right uh, there with you all the time. Oh boy, he, uh, he hung right to me. You have a lot of respect for these rangers and these Filipinos, but now... Oh, uh, boy. You can't beat them. Well, that must have been quite an experience, and certainly thank you a lot for telling me about it. Oh, you're quite welcome.